Seven reasons to consider going to paddling events. I've gotten a lot of questions and emails about uh, the Matanzas trip that we recently took, especially after I put up the video. Overall questions for that trip, but then also several questions on whether it's a good idea to go to an event, even if you're a novice paddler, uh, what the minimum requirements are to go to a paddling event. And I thought I'd bundle together a couple of those questions and answers into this video. But if you're a new paddler and are thinking of going on a kayaking event, but are intimidated, let's say, or you don't think you have the right equipment or the right skills yet, or you haven't developed your skills yet, that shouldn't hold you back from at least looking into kayaking events because that's a fantastic place, a really great way for you to develop skills. So let's go through the items on this list. So the first one is usually kayaking events will have a really great group of instructors coming together to put together that event. Unless the event is very small, in which case it might be just one or two instructors. And for those, then probably you already know the instructor or you already know the outfitter that's putting together the event. But for the larger events, a lot of times instructors will come from either the surrounding areas or also will often invite instructors from other parts of the country, other parts of the world, to come together for that particular event. And what's great about having a broad group of instructors and coaches at an event is as someone that is learning, you have the opportunity to be in different groups and learn from different coaches. Everyone will have a slightly different approach to a specific task. And usually during events, instructors will switch off and will teach different things and different skills uh, throughout the event. So you as, as a participant get the chance to learn with lots of different people each time. I always bring up that when I was working on my hand roll, when I was at the Delmarva Festival, um, I worked with four different people that gave me little nuggets of information and that I was able to put together uh, and eventually made my way to a hand roll. I've since lost the hand roll and that's okay. I'll get to it someday. But um, everyone had a slightly different take and combining all those things together is how I was able to put together the skills I needed to get to that particular goal. If you're only attending courses uh, in your local community, this is a great way to get to know people outside your local community because there's going to be coaches coming in from all over the place. So for the second one, Sometimes these events get to be longer events, and sometimes it's hard to make it to longer events. Maybe we don't have many vacation days, or maybe it's hard to line up all those days for a particular event. Um, so many events might be a one-day event, a weekend event, a long weekend event, and some of them might be an entire week. This uh, Matanzas trip that I just came back from uh, was five days of paddling. What's great about longer events versus this was something that the group talked about a lot. Uh, every day we had classroom time and on water time. And what was really great about it being longer is many of the skills that we started to think about, to work on, to develop in the beginning of the trip, we had several days to work on. And so paddlers that were getting into surfing in the beginning uh, they might have felt a little intimidated by conditions but then by the second day they had already progressed in their comfort level so they were starting to apply a lot of the stuff they were learning immediately and develop their skills throughout the week another reason that events and trips like these are great is you get the chance to go and paddle and explore new places that you might not go to otherwise i mean we all have bucket list places that we want to go to whether it's paddling or not if you sign up for a trip in a different place that you've never heard of all of those logistics are taken care of and all you need to do is show up and you're going to have an awesome time seeing really different and amazing locations or um, or conditions that you might not be exposed to at all. That, that was one of the things that opened the door for me in surfing is uh, getting out to several events on the west coast of the U.S., being in the Pacific and those types of waves. That's when a lot of the surfing um, skill development started clicking for me. 
And I was able to apply some of the things that I was trying to learn elsewhere. All of a sudden, I was on glassy long waves and long rides that then I could apply those things and then bring those back to the dumpy waves that we were more accustomed to where I live. But just that idea of going to a new place, exploring it with people that because events are almost always hosted by local um, by local coaches, local instructors, even if a group of coaches travel to a destination, almost always they will use uh, local knowledge so that they go to a great place, especially during good conditions. Um, events are usually planned around specific conditions in those specific places. Let's say it's a surf training camp. The group will plan it around the time of the year when conditions will be best for that particular group. So if there's bucket list locations that you'd like to go to, you'd like to maybe paddle, definitely seek out events that might be happening in those particular areas because that would be a great way, a great crash course to get to paddle a place that maybe you wouldn't go to otherwise. The next point, this one comes up in questions all the time. A lot of times events are catered to a specific skill or overall skill set, but they almost always include uh, lower levels so that newer paddlers can come and can get into the event. Don't be intimidated if you're a newer paddler uh, that if you don't have the right gear or you haven't done the skills before, most events I've been to, unless they were very specific, they will always have lower level classes as well and they will be inclusive. Many times it's gonna be run by an outfitter and you can rent equipment and almost always there's gonna be groups that are there just to get their feet wet. And so this is a great way of not only starting to develop your skills, but you might be offered lots of different classes or trips that you wouldn't have done otherwise. And almost all of the bigger events I've been to, there's always been uh, certain things offered like, like an exploration group where you just go for a paddle for the day on a really cool place or a really cool location. Let's bring up lumpy waters that could be seen as intimidating because some of the conditions that the group would be paddling in are huge. They always have intro to surf. Some of the classes are even without the kayak. The group goes and you roll around in the waves and you try to body surf and you try to get used to what the wave is doing to your body so that then you can move up to sitting in your kayak and see how the wave is going to uh, move you around. So you don't have to think that unless you can ride a huge wave, you won't be able to go to one of these events. And a lot of times what the event will do too is cater to its group. So depending on what conditions are like, there will be a meeting the night before, the morning of, and the coaches will say, well, these are the conditions today. How many people want to go out in these types of conditions? How many people would rather hang back and do something else? Let's say work on forward strokes or work on rolling or simply want to go on a cool exploration, exploration paddle or nature paddle. Those exploration paddles or kind of laid back paddles will be available, especially if people have been pushing themselves really hard for a day or two and they might be tired. So having an alternative where you can be on the water, but you're not going to be out getting trashed around, uh, that happens all the time too. So don't be intimidated by events. Uh, look up what the range of skills that are needed for it. Uh, reach out to the organizers, ask questions. And my guess is most of them would be open to newer paddlers Without the skills, without the equipment, all of that can be sorted out, but it's a great way to jump into it. Which ties me into the next point. Uh, events are awesome ways of getting to know new equipment, seeing new equipment, testing new stuff. Uh, when you're out with a group, it's it, we often trade equipment for the session, for a couple of waves, for just because that way you get to test a little bit of everything and you get to see what's out there. We oftentimes jump in each other's boats to see what the fuzz is all about. When people, especially when people get a new boat, you wouldn't be surprised. Every single person in the group is going to jump into the new boat at some point. I don't know, a new seat or a new shape or a new hull. Uh, 
everyone's going to jump in and, and give it a test. So if you're like me in any way where I, I, I love finding out what's out there, what type of equipment is out there, uh, events are a great way to get to know that stuff. And if you're in the market for anything, events are a great place to find used equipment and also find new equipment. Most of the time, the outfitters that are running the event or fellow coaches might bring equipment with them to sell. But oftentimes, people that are looking to upgrade something or switching out of a boat or a paddle or whatever, and what a great time to test something. And then if it works for you, take it with you. The next one is my favorite and something that has really held true from event to event, and that is meeting people, making new friends, making new connections. When you go to an event, very often times you will meet new people that you end up then paddling with moving forward, whether it's in that particular place or you just make certain connections, you get along with people. It's like camp. You befriend people at the event and then you want to have fun again together. And many times I've met people at certain events that then we plan trips together to go elsewhere together or maybe regroup in that one spot or if we were in their home place, then next time I invite them to come and paddle in my backyard. And so the friendships that you develop during an event are awesome. And especially for new paddlers, if you feel you don't really know many people around your area, if you find out that there's going to be an event nearby, you'd be surprised how many people might not be online, might not be uh, in meetup groups, but you'll get to meet them at the event. Now you could have other people, other buddies to go out on the water or test equipment or whatever you might be interested in. But, all right, the last point I want to make, and this one is very dear to me, is from events, you will always walk away with homework or skills or nuggets of information that might not make sense right when you're there, but then you can work on, on your own, moving forward. It's been countless times for me now, I, I mean, I, I know I probably made many videos where I mentioned this, where we learned new skills that maybe my skills were not there yet, but it was something that I can think about as I continue developing those skills. And then eventually something clicks and I now understand what they meant. Sometimes when something is hard and then after a class, you just keep thinking about what someone said or a coach or instructor, and eventually it clicks into place and then you think, oh, it could have been this easy all along. I, I've been struggling with this. All of a sudden now it's easy to do this one particular thing. Well, many times that's happened to me because of a lesson at an event where something was said, and next time I do this, edge away from it. While I was in the class, maybe I couldn't get it and it was hard to do. But then as I continue working on it, all of a sudden something opened up for me and then it made sense months later. And so if we didn't go to those events, a lot of times those things, those breakthroughs, I feel maybe might not come. And just to tie back to one of the earlier points, longer events allow for those breakthroughs to happen during the event because you have enough time from the first lesson, lots of practice over a couple of days, and then finally something clicks. Uh, it's awesome. Or maybe if you have an event or two or three in the summer and some of them are similar, you can learn something on the first one, practice, 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 get to the next one, do what you just learned, and then continue building. And then you can apply that uh, when you're on the water on your own or with your group or whatever else you're doing. You never know what you're going to learn and you always walk away with something. And to be completely honest, that's one of the things I really love about attending events with cameras and being the person capturing some of the stuff because, because I get to observe uh, other coaches and instructors uh, share their knowledge and their skills. And it's awesome to be able to then uh, break that down and not only try to incorporate it, but try to share that with others. So I'm gonna leave you with a final thought, and that is uh, many times I'm asked, well, how do I find events? I think the easiest one 
uh, is finding out if there's outfitters near you. Even if, if you've already taken every class with those particular outfitters or instructors or whoever is local to you, uh, they often will crisscross with other instructors, other events throughout the country, throughout the world. Uh, many of the instructors will go abroad and teach or participate in other events around the world. I'd say first find out if a local club, a local outfitter, a local meetup group, a local Facebook group, find out if they have any events coming up. And sometimes maybe it only happens a year from now uh, for your local spot. But let's say, for example, you'll have a lot of events, let's say in the Northeast of the US uh, in the summertime when weather is warm and the water is warming up, but you might be able to find winter events or early spring events way down South uh, where the water is way warmer uh, and the conditions are warmer. Or you might be able to, if you're interested in doing international travel, you might be able to find events at different times of, at different times of the year depending on where it is and what conditions are like in those particular areas. I mean, online searches will be super useful or even just uh, using social media, people that are posting photos, videos, whatever from uh, their events, they almost always have a website with information, with sign-up information. And that's a way that I've done it in the past where I have found an event or I've talked to someone somewhere else. And so I bugged one or two of my buddies and I said, hey, does anybody want to come with me? Let's go do this out on the West Coast. And if we can find good tickets, we're there. Or you could even plan them a year in advance to find cheap tickets. If you're going with some friends, it might be cheaper for housing. It might be cheaper for transport. And trust me, paddlers, especially event organizers, are always excited to have new people come to the event. So to wrap it up, I highly recommend paddling events. I think they're fantastic. They're a great way to push your skills, to meet new people. And, and you'd be surprised how many times you'll make really good friends at an event that ends up now being part of your kayak group for years to come just because you cross paths in a particular event. If there's any questions, if anybody has any uh, stories that they'd like to share of events they've been to or places that they had never been to before, but they signed up randomly for an event and then loved a particular area, please post them below. I love hearing about those types of uh, trips. If there's any other questions, please post that as well. Or if there's any tips in finding events, I'm sure people would love to hear on that as well. Please subscribe if you'd like. I'm always trying to put these videos out. I just started a membership part of the page. If anyone is interested in signing up for that, I'm going to be holding office hours and I'll be sharing all that information within that section of the channel. Luke Romer, Kai Kipster. Thank you for watching and see you next time.